So this is what I like to call the sunlight look. So for this setup, we're emulating the midday sun and we're creating a light that's small, high up and far away. Small, high up and far away. Now you might be thinking, the sun isn't small. You're right, it's not, it's huge. But this is where it gets all science-y and nerdy and whatever. Just a bare bulb placed further away is going to create a harder, more contrasty light. So because the sun is so far away and appears so small in the sky, it creates a hard light with a lot of contrast. And that's the look we're trying to create in the studio today. I miss you. I just love how these turned out. The light that you want is not always there for you. So sometimes you gotta make it by, but understanding how natural or available light works, it will actually get you a lot closer to making the light that you want. Think about like the sun, again, it's not just this like block of light coming through. It bounces around, right? It's filling the space. So we added that fill or left the lights on in this case to add the fill. It really makes a difference to make it feel more like an actual natural light shot when we're creating it any time of day, any time we want. All right, so this is the first shot of the day. We're gonna do some continuous studio stuff with the Aperture 120D and the Light Dome to get that really nice, soft lighting. And the Light Dome, Light Dome, Dome, Dome to get that really nice, soft lighting. One of the sort of golden rules of lighting is the larger the light source is relative to the subject, the softer the light will be. Recreating natural light with artificial light. And I'm gonna start with soft sunlight. Okay, but before I get into this, I want you to know that a big part in being able to work with light is being able to properly and accurately observe it as it appears in everyday life. And observing it, at least in our context here, will be much different than merely looking at it, you know? Observing it entails a more deliberate, more thoughtful consideration of how a particular light pattern behaves. So with that, let's go through with what I have learned to call soft sunlight. Now, this type of light typically derives from one small point source, which is obviously the sun, and in addition, it is accompanied by surrounding light sources, the most common among them being, you know, the bright blue sky. And this blue sky can actually be considered as another light source that ultimately softens up the shadows and evens out what would otherwise be heavy contrast. I can exemplify this here in my studio. Let's say I were to place a bare bulb flash pointing down onto the subject like so. And when I take that picture, obviously it's not the prettiest light you've seen, but notice in particular how everything in the picture has a decent exposure to it, except for this long shadow streak. Now let's say I were to add another flash, this time with a large softbox attached to it, and I placed it right behind the first flash, pointing in roughly the same direction. I'm gonna set that flash's power so that it's just one stop darker than the first flash. Now, when I take that picture, notice what happens to the shadows now. They're much softer and even has more detail in them. What we get is a much more softened image because the shadows have much more illumination in them, which lowered the overall contrast compared to the first image. This is how soft sunlight is created. It does take, you know, many different forms and different looks, but essentially it follows this same exact concept. Now, some real world cases of this, for example, is this shot of the cityscape where you do see harsh sunlight hitting the buildings, but just below the ground level, you see that it is in shade. And take note of the color of the shade as well. The color of the shade is a little bit more cooler in tone, which is of course reflected of the color of the sky. You may see other examples of this near the coastline or an open ocean. In this case, the sun is being slightly modified by clouds, but nonetheless, there is a main light source, the sun, and then surrounding it is light reflecting off of the clouds themselves, the sky, and even reflected light from the water as well. Also, isn't the shot kind of like relaxing or even mysterious? Like what if I added some like cinematic piano sound and fade into it or something? There was an idea to bring together a group of remarkable people. Uh, sorry. 
Some more examples where we see this happening include this overhead shot of a mountain range, where you also see pockets of warm sunlight, as well as larger pockets of cooler toned ambient light. We also see it here in a snow-capped forest, where the shaded portions of the scene are mainly blue, but where the sun is hitting exhibits more orange and warm toned light. Now, in cases where the sunlight is much brighter than the surrounding ambient light, I know I'm thinking of like a, just a really bright sunny afternoon, or where the surrounding elements just don't produce as much reflected light in general, then you get more of this really harsh light look. You get more of this contrasty light. Like, for example, these two fine gentlemen playing basketball on a, you know, sunny afternoon. The light is very hard, it's very contrasty, and probably isn't even that flattering. Also, what is this? What is he doing? All right, so let's create a lighting setup with this type of light based on what we've just observed from the previous examples. So just like we talked about, this lighting setup consists of a point source with a general ambient fill light. So in this setup, I just continued on with what I was already showing you in the previous examples. I created a base ambient light layer first by attaching this large three x four softbox and I fired it over the general scene like so. This time, I then bounced it into this white foam board that I have standing up on the other side. And taking that first shot with that flash, you can see that the image is just overall underexposed slightly and also a little flat, which is of course what we want. And then for the key light, I simply added another bare bulb flash coming from the same direction as that softbox. That key light is essentially acting like our sun. And the last thing I added was my trusty little gobo that I had made for a previous video, which you also may be familiar with. end up using this gobo a lot in my shoots because I just love the look that it gives. I used it here because I wanted it to have that same spotlight effect that we saw in examples like the mountain ranges or the snow-capped forest or even this gorgeous warm walkway. And combined with our overall ambient light, balancing those two exposures, we come up with our final image that looks like this. This is essentially soft sunlight. It has that effect of hard light, but the ambient light layer mixed in opens up the shadows a little bit more and therefore softening the overall contrast. So now let's rewind and show you what I did here. I took a very common lighting pattern, a very common form of natural light that you would see in almost everyday life. I described kind of what exactly makes up that type of light, saying that it is a point light source with an ambient fill light balancing the overall contrast. And then I took it into the studio and I recreated that same lighting pattern using flash. Mm -hmm. 